I made Poppy Playtime in Unity 3D. This project started over one year ago with a very short video. And with the help of the community and the Discord, so much has been added. And in the past three months since the last update video, I have added a ton of new features and changes that I'm going to share with you today. And as always, the full project file is available for download in the description for anyone who wants to use it, whether you're making a Poppy Playtime fan game, adding your own cool stuff, or you just want to play around with it. Anyways, don't forget to like the video and subscribe to the channel. It's free and you can unsubscribe at any time. Without further ado, let's take a look at all the new content in this project and a bit about how it was made. To start off, I just want to give a massive shout out to Catweb over on the Discord for sending me their own awesome version of the project and allowing me to use a few assets from it for this video. And so, thanks to them, the placeholder models have now been replaced by the actual in-game models, and I was able to use a few scripts with some small tweaks, so thanks so much for sending that over. So, let's start with the most obvious change, the brand new test scene. This is a huge step up compared to the old one, and it feels a lot more finished. In this scene, you can experiment with all the mechanics, and I added areas for some of the new stuff, including an area for the grab turret and the button, and an area for the vents. Other than that, there isn't very much to be said about this, so let's keep moving because we have a lot of changes to go through. Next, I improved the player animations for walking, running, jumping, and crouching. Originally, I planned on just taking the actual animations from the game, which were already in the project Catweb made, but since the character controller was set up completely different, I couldn't just copy and paste them. So I spent a long time remaking each animation by hand. I think I did a pretty good job, but let me know how I did in the comments. Here are those animations. While I was at it, I also smoothed the crouching transition and did a little bit of math to detect if there's an object above the player and to stop them from uncrouching if so. This works by shooting a raycast out the top of the player and then checking to see if it collided with anything. If it did, then it will ignore the player's attempts to uncrouch. Also in this update, the green electricity actually works on a timer like in the real game. Once an object has been powered, a 15 second timer starts and will automatically lose power when complete. This was very easy to make. I just added a 15 second animation that starts when the receiver is powered. At the end of the animation, it calls a method to revert all powered objects back to their original state. Next, a quick little change to the player controller. You can no longer move while in the air, but you still keep your momentum. So the player can no longer switch directions midair. I think this just feels a lot better. To achieve this, I just had to edit the player controller script and quickly check if the player was on the ground before letting the player try to move. I also made some nice visual upgrades to the grab pack cable. Instead of it just being a simple black line, it now looks more 3D. Plus, I added a nice bend in the cable when the cable extends. Both of these effects were fairly simple. To make the cable 3D, it's just a custom gradient texture attached to a material on the cable. And to make it bend, I was able to find a script in Catweb's project and tweak it a bit to make a custom bend. This script works by adding more vertices to the line and positioning them based off two variables. Adjusting these variables in specific ways creates a natural bend. Another update I made was completely redoing the footsteps system, because it still didn't work properly for most people, so I remade it much better this time. It will now play a random sound from a list depending on the action the player is doing. Right now, there is only one set of sounds, but I'll add support for different sounds for when the player is walking on different materials in the next update. Now onto the upgrades to the flare gun. I finally replaced the placeholder reloading text with an animation I made like the one in the game. The flares also stop moving on collision with objects like in Chapter 3, thanks to another script found in Catweb's project. I also replaced the flare gun sounds with the actual in-game ones.
And the final major addition to this update is the working grab turret seen in chapter 3. The player can interact with it to aim and then pull the lever to fire. If the hand collides with a specific receiver, it can power objects. To make this work, I created a few scripts. The first one handles the player interacting logic. When it detects the player interacting, it disables the player object and enables a separate controller on the grab turret, which controls the direction of the barrel. When the player presses interact again, it disables the turret controller and enables the player controller again. Then the firing lever acts as any other interactable object, but has the special property to connect to turrets. Once pulled, the barrel shoots a raycast. If the raycast hits something, it moves the hand to the hit position and then back again after. If it does not hit anything, the hand will extend into the air and then back. But if the raycast detects a receiver, it will move towards it and then not move back until retracting using the lever. It will also power whatever the receiver is connected to. I then added a cable connected to the hand in the barrel and created a new script for a custom curve on the turret's cable. I do plan to add more functionality to this in the future, but for now, it will look just like this. There are also a lot of other small additions that I'll quickly go through and just mention. Starting with swing handles actually swinging the player plus added more, some more sounds for them. I added a leaning effect to the grab pack and camera when moving left and right. Race cars can now be activated by pulling the cord. I added a delay for switching hands so the hand model actually changes at the right time. I added dragging sounds for when the player pulls physics objects. There's now a new box model, new door models, new hand model, new dash hand model, new jump pad model, and new blue hand scanner model. Handles can now be activated by the battery. I added a toggleable flashlight to the player. And finally, the Smiling Critter AI now have some more ambient sounds. And with that being said, I think that will bring us to the end of this video. The download link for the full project is in the description. I hope you enjoyed the video, and if so, consider subscribing to the channel for more updates to this project. Don't forget to join the Discord, and I'll see you in the next one.